in fact, bin Laden uh, ended up being killed by the Americans, but he was not suicidal. He was not ready to, to, to uh, allow himself to, to, to be, he was not a suicide bomber himself. No. The hot potato was to be a suicide, to become a suicide. In fact, we can say the hot potato was become a suicide bomber, mm -hmm. and the epic script was where and how you were going to do it and make it worthwhile. Mm -hmm. To use that example, I have another example that of of people I know about, where the mother was a drug addict and alcoholic, and. Uh, she had a neighbor who was staying with her, and um, she was and and uh, was greedy. Wanted to steal the money for in order to get drugs. She had a party. She had a party at her home, and her grown son. She participated in that party. There was a lot of drinking, and it ended with this woman who had the money, who was seeking shelter in that family. Uh, sleep, falling asleep in one of the rooms, and then the mother went over and put a pillow on her head and murdered her, actually. I, I don't know that she was consciously out to murder her. She just wanted to keep her quiet when the woman was awakening and steal her money. But at any rate, it ended with murder because she sat, the woman sat on this woman's head, and the woman died. Uh, at which point the son who was present took the dead body and tried to dispose of it in the alley, took it down and so on. Later on, of course, through fingerprints, the, the culprit was found very easily and the son was blamed for having killed this woman. And the boy uh, it allowed the police to see him as the murderer rather than um, inculpating his mother, rather than claiming that his mother had done it, which he had actually done. He told somebody later on that it was, he had not done it. And it was not clear whether he consciously or unconsciously took the blame. But at any rate, he was indicted for murder and is serving prison now for 30 years, and the mother was only indicted for uh, serving alcohol to a minor. The boy was minor at the time and uh, only serves a few years, whereas he's serving a 30-year prison cell sentence for the murder. And here is an example of a hot potato, and we don't know what, whether he was operating with certain survival conclusions mm -hmm. or what the real story is underneath. But this is the kind of murky example one has. As I said, we seldom get actual examples of people carrying a hot potato actually knowingly coming into therapy for that. Occasionally people who work in, with ch children in family therapy nowadays may have the opportunity, therapists may have the opportunity to see a hot mm -hmm. potato being passed on and may have the opportunity to offer treatment and free, try and free the child okay. of that yeah. hot potato. So you mentioned, uh, um, um, you mentioned uh, really tragic uh, stories and, and examples. What uh, examples? Uh, a very tra tragic, tragic and, example. And sad yes. Exa yes. Example. Uh, that could, uh, but, but the concept of hot potato and epic script could work uh, on a lower level, meaning it's, yes. it's, a, it's a on a simpler level. Yeah. I think I used an example of uh, Judy Garland, for instance, yeah. in an example where she definitely. Uh, according to um, reports that were mm -hmm. given about what she said, was that she was trying. She she aimed. She had to become successful, a successful artist, because of her stage struck mother. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are all these examples of stage struck, and she happened to become successful as an artist, but was not happy uh, uh, about it. Okay. Uh, one has to look at the biography. I, I don't know. I've got this from magazines. Uh, her daughter Lisa Minnelli then got successful also, and I believe that she was happy. So we don't know. Here is a, an area where script and every script mm -hmm. may may um, uh, coincide yeah. or maybe a little bit. But usually, I like to distinguish uh, to to 
separate script from okay. epi script. Do you have any recommendation how to work with? Uh, okay. Okay, Fanita. Yes. So uh, we already mentioned that we that there is a part uh, of your uh, uh, material called yeah. epi script or hot potato, and yeah. it's with different ones uh, in comparison with uh, with uh, classical TA. Yeah. Now it's I think it's more or less is a part of classical TA. Yeah. But. Um, that has a uh, certain history, how, like you yeah. developed it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the history has, uh, it's connected with the fact that I was always unhappy about the references to script as being negative. Mm -hmm. And at a certain point in 1967, 68, I came upon the concept of the hot potato and the epi script and realized that what what people, some therapists saw as negative script was really not a negative script, but what I called a um, hot potato that was mm -hmm. elaborated as an epi script. And the first um, way in which I wrote about it, I, I, had, I have a writing phobia actually, and um, however I uh, wrote, my, wrote out my, my concept, which I presented at the TA conference, uh, in a rather elementary way, originally in the bulletin, in the TE bulletin, and Bern, um, pub which Bern published. And there's a story to it, but we won't bother with that story right now. Uh, and the summary of that is that I said the episcript is a condensed version that looks like a person's script, but has a tragic ending or a bad ending. And that bad ending is really what I call a hot potato, like the children's game of hot potato. And um, as I said, the first time I wrote about it was in 19, it was published in the Burns uh, 1969, uh, under so Epis, howdy, uh, uh, the bulletin, the TA bulletin. Mm -hmm. Uh, of uh, number 33, January 1970, and was an original, originally a different something, October 1969 also, and there's another little publication in the bulletin entitled, um, I'll show you yet, or oh, they'll be sorry they kicked me, so there are a couple of these articles in the bulletin which can be looked at. Uh, can be can be seen uh, in terms of trying to to explain what I mean yeah. by hot potato. Uh, I think you can look up the article entitled uh, "Burn Phobia Episcripts and Racketeering," uh, which was published in the TA Journal, um, TA, TA Journal, April 1996. So you see many years after 1968 when I first started with it, and so there are... And we were added to this material to the DVD, yeah? Yeah, and in between there is also a description, which was a keynote speech that I gave in the, at the TA conference in India in January 1977. No, I'm sorry, 19, 19, 1997. And uh, that was never published, and that can be attached here. Uh, and the whole job is trying to explain. Let me try and explain them in as simple a way as I can do mm -hmm. it, and then you can get a lot of other examples by, re by looking at these publications. The hot potato is really some kind of a uh, like a curse experienced by a particular individual. And that individual seems to have the feeling that somehow he has to implement it. It may be something he or she has had transmitted as a part of his script that he wanted to throw out or whatever. And the hot potato is then this, uh, uh, based on the tendency human beings have in magic beliefs. And the hot potato is something passed on by a more powerful person to what I call a vulnerable recipient. The vulnerable recipient is someone who is in a powerless position 
in regard to the powerful donor of the hot potato. So it can be a child and you can find hot potatoes transmitted in families uh, uh, from father to son or, or whatever or you can sometimes hot potatoes are passed on in love relationships and sometimes hot potatoes are passed on in social contexts and uh, even spiritual ones or religious ones yes mm -hmm. and I do consider that the whole 9-11 um, um, yeah. tragedy mm -hmm. uh, can be seen as a hot potato or a series of hot potatoes given by Bin Laden to his followers the hot potato being harm Americans even at the cost of your life so that's the hot potato, that's the instruction or injunction, if you will, but not injunction in the meaning, yeah, injunction, if you will, and you can tie it into yeah. some of the work that yeah. the Goldings have done about injunctions. And then the episcript is the process of implementing it. So you get the injunction from bin Laden, do destroy Americans or harm Americans or whatever. And then you get these young men who take it on as their life task and they experience it as one would experience a script. But it's not a script, it's an episcript because it's a harmful way of operating in one's life. So they experience it as a good way that they feel they're going to end up in paradise. But it still is a negative, harmful thing and certainly harmful to others. And so just for me to understand, there's an outside <coughs> impulse just at the, at the origin and a person integrates it in some way in, in as his or her own script. And, yeah, the as task. a task. And, uh, and uh, at the end it's a kind of their own, I would say, fabric or whatever it is. Uh, yeah. to, and it feels like this. Uh, uh, even when the, when the beginning and the start yeah. is, is uh, from something outside. That's, That's right. It is felt like a script, but it's not the real mm -hmm. script. Okay. It's not based on the person's mm -hmm. original script, though it may contaminate the person's original yeah. script. So, so that's where the... the it's a manipulation the, on a very, yeah. very deep level. Right. And then you get these young men, in order to use that example, because they have, they, this way we have an example that everybody is familiar with. So you get this uh, message which comes from Bin Laden, and then these young men take it on as their life task. And they are perfectly happy to see their life ending this way, because this is their job. And you can see that an episcript can take time to be implemented. They go and they train, they learn uh, flying, they be, mm, live in Germany first and yeah. in America and whatever. And they do all the necessary, take all the necessary steps which require intelligence, by the way. Even yeah. though it's always the episcript is a ref a represents a suggestion from a harmful suggestion from somebody else, it, it can happen in a family, for instance. It's a, and yet the person who implements it may be quite intelligent. The young men who uh, were implementing the, the Bin Laden instructions were very intelligent and educated, mm -hmm. but they have a blind spot. About what they, about the task, they don't see that this is a harmful task. They see it as a very important and useful task. So, an episcript, the person can have suicide as an episcript, or, or be operating with a hot potato of suicide, I should say, and implement when they implement it, then it's an episcript. So. An uh, episcript really means a collection of hot potatoes or mm -hmm. magic. And we have to include, in understanding that, we have to include the fact that human beings believe in magic. Mm -hmm. The child ego state believes in magic and will take on magic. And some of it is positive magic. We might even be taking good messages from some people. But at any rate, unless we understand the power of magic beliefs, we cannot really function. And this is why I have trouble describing uh, power potatoes mm -hmm. and episcript. And I think it's a work in progress and I urge uh, listeners to think about this and to um, consider whether they have examples in their own practice or in their own knowledge. Because 
I don't think that the person who carries an episcleptical comes in for therapy. You're more likely to see it in, in, as an outside example, outside of your therapeutic or counseling <coughs> practice. Survival conclusions and episcript, are they in some way related to each other? Well, uh, they can be, but not really because I see survival conclusions as being, well, they could be. But it, they have been taken on at a very early stage of life. And, and hot potatoes and episcripts get taken on later because they're more so formulated. More, and it's more, yeah, it's more on a verbal level, yeah? Yeah, yeah, they include, they include another part of the cortex. Yeah. I think the survival con uh, conclusion operates far more, far more mm -hmm. on an organic basis, mm -hmm. whereas the hot potato and the episcript include the uh, cerebral mm. part of the person, the, line, the more developed yeah. part. And, and maybe uh, uh, will be, uh, um, can some particular survival conclusions um, uh, provide a kind of uh, compatibility to, to certain hot potatoes, meaning oh, when yes. I have some, yes. uh, I'm, yes. I'm more yes. open for a yes. particular hot potato and uh, integrated in a, in a kind of, of, uh, of AP script. Yeah. yeah. So, so well, it's, it's we, we mm. can fantasize, for instance, these young men, in order to stay with that example with bin Laden, that they may have had survival conclusions about obeying the big leader. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Which made them vulnerable. I think survival yeah. conclusions, certain survival conclusions, make a person want. vulnerable. Yeah. And the, both the, the giver of the, you know, it can be the same person, it can be the parent, it can be the father, for instance, yeah. who passes something on, or the mother yeah. who passes something on. The, or in my original example was of a mother who was afraid that she was going crazy, and she passed on the hot potato of going crazy to her sons. Yeah. And one of these sons became a therapist and tried to pass it on to his patients in order to get rid of it. The hot potato element always has an, a magic element, a magic belief in the one who gives it, who passes it on, which has the element that if I pass it on to somebody, then I am free of it. The person is not really, can be free of it during their lifetime. Mm 